show me um, where the the car had uh, had turned because you you had pointed something out. That I think it was very critical. Yeah, yeah, show come me. this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is Fairfax. We're looking north, and then this is Wilshire Boulevard, east west. So, the the shooter's car turned right onto Wilshire and sped down this street, down Wilshire, going eastbound, and. If you look up here on the left, there's a bunch of street lights. It's an art installation, really famous spot at uh, the LA County Museum of Art. Where those lights are used to be a street called Ogden that cut through this property. Um, but then eventually LACMA, uh, the art museum, expanded their property and they ended up taking over that, that street and, and it's not a street anymore. So now you can only turn right onto Ogden. But when the shooting happened and the shooter was taken off down this street, there was a city bus driver coming the other way and that city bus driver said that they looked in their rearview mirror and they saw the guy the shooter turn left onto Ogden and that's how he escaped so you can see it's not very far from where he turns where the shooting happened on the corner and the shooter turns left comes down here to where those lights are where Ogden used to be it's not very far and he's in you know an Impala SS big V8 you can see he just tore off and then took his first left to zigzag off the street that he could find. And that's why the security vehicle that gave chase with Paul Offord and um, Reggie Blaylock, they said that by the time they hit the corner, the shooter was just gone. So that was it, disappeared. And what the funny thing is that death row off is not that far, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like a mile. And shooter fed. Right there, the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He was not running back to death row's offices. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna be like, hey, I'll take these guys back to the people that probably hired him. <laughs> Only these walls could talk. I know. And now this is gonna be like, a, I think, an under, like a subway station or something. Because they just built a new subway line, I think, down Wilshire Boulevard, the past few years. Um, but yeah. There it is. So you can still turn right onto Ogden at this light, but you can't turn left anymore, which is the direction the shooter supposedly went. Let me ask you this, and I, and I know I hate to, you know, keep, <laughs> I feel like it's be beating a dead horse. Sure. There's a, in your deep dive episode, I believe it was, it was the first one, uh, you and uh, Deal got into a little back and forth. Because what you're working yeah, with- Yeah, I don't remember what it was over. It was, um, about chasing the, the car the car okay yeah and and he said uh was it tone yeah he said him and i think tone anthony jacobs right and what you're going off of is the original statements right right from that the guys made the detectives back in 97 yeah right so <laughs> in between of what a span of 20 something years right maybe you know the i don't know if memories have gotten fuzzy or what but i i know i know that paul offered who was the head of bad boy security and Reggie Blaylock, who was an Inglewood police officer who was off duty and working private security that night, they were in the follow Chevy Blazer that was behind Biggie when the shooting happened. And they both said that they were the ones that took off after the shooter when the shooting happened. And then I believe one of the witnesses in Biggie's car also claimed that when he looked up, he saw that their Blazer go by them and go after the shooter also. So there's, that's three people from back, those original statements in the 90s saying that the, it was a security detail and the Chevy Blazer that went after the shooter. But they said as soon as they hit the corner, the Impala was already gone, because he immediately turned left and, you know, that was it. So the chase, chase was over before it even started, really. Right, and, and the whole thing, back and forth, deals I had said in the comments that, no, you're lying, I could tell you. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to badmouth the guy or just come across the wrong way, but it, it you were, yeah. we we're trying to get a better understanding. Sure. Which was what you were, Telling him. Right. I was. I mean, I was quoting the actual statements that he and Tone had made back then. You know, because I can't find any statements from either of them saying back then that they chased after. Exactly. So I'm just. I'm just trying to. Under, I'm just trying to figure out where it's coming from. That's all. Yeah. And then the hill thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I don't see no hills. I've lived in this neighborhood off and on. I mean, I lived. I moved to LA almost 20 years ago. I've lived in this neighborhood a couple times. A total of seven years, and um, I think I think he said Dill said something about that they went up at the top of a hill and that's where they lost him. But there's no hills. Right. 
There's just no hills in this neighborhood. And I, Reggie, uh, Reggie recently kind of said the same thing, I think. There's no, it's flat. It's a flat part of LA. You have to literally drive for at least, you know, two or three miles in any direction before you're gonna get to a, a, anything that looks like a hill. There isn't and, an inclined street either. No, I mean, there's a, there's, it undulates a little bit. I mean, that's, that right there is the closest thing you get to a hill in the whole neighborhood and it goes up like 10 feet. Like, right. I don't, there's just, there's just aren't any hills in this neighborhood. So I don't know, I don't know what, you know, memory does funny things. Maybe it's just misre misremembering, I don't know. But yeah, it's weird. Let me ask you a little, uh, you, do you think there will be complete closure to this case or is, is this something that just goes on and on and endlessly? I think the Biggie case is as closed right now as it ever will be. Yeah, because you're never gonna find, I don't think there's any more information to find out. Because, you know, Poochie, who I believe is the shooter, is long dead. Right. And so there's nothing new that's going to come out on him that isn't already out there. You know, you're not going to find, some one's not going to find a VHS tape with him confessing. Right. You know, so you, you, without that, there's no other, there's no more evidence that you're going to get for Biggie's murder than what is already out there. Right. So everybody just has to make up their own minds over what they, what they believe. So this, uh, on the left here, is the, this apartment building is the registered address on Tupac's driver's license. I think the last one issued to him before he died, that was registered as his address. I don't know if he lived there or not, but that's where he was registered as living. Which back then would have been a, a pretty new luxury apartment building, so it kind of makes sense. But what's wild is, that means that when Biggie was being taken to the hospital, he was driven right by Tupac's old apartment.